Hello, how is everyone doing today? My name is Joe Fernandez, a part of the marketing team over here at Tech30. I would like to thank everyone for attending this webinar. And today we have uh, Cody Wiltrout from PTC, who will be giving a live presentation on Creo's behavioral modeling extension. We also have Ron Zabilski, who is a solutions consultant for Tech30. And just to remind everyone, if you have a question at any time during this webinar, feel free to leave it in the question box or the chat box and we'll do our best to answer these questions at the end of the webinar. And with that being said, I'm gonna be passing it over to Ron Zabilski, who will give a little background of who Tech30 is and what we offer. Thank you, Joe. You know, I just wanna say, as we conduct this uh, webinar, I encourage you again, uh, as Co uh, Joe said, to uh, engage with us. You'll be able to ask questions, leave comments in the sidebar in the GoToWebinar panel. And even if you have questions or comments that don't relate to today's specific content, uh, topic, please feel free to ask them and we can address them in follow-up emails or in future webinars. And please view Tech30 as a conduit to get feedback into the uh, PTC Creo product managers and development team. We'd also be happy to receive comments and questions by email anytime after the webinar. And uh, just wanna let you know of a, uh, uh, promotion that PTC is uh, offering on Creo right now. They're having a uh, buy one, get one half off through the end of September. This uh, promotion provides 25% uh, off on two licenses of Creo. This promotion is good for any number of uh, two pairs of licenses, and it's through the end of September. Please contact me if you find this uh, of interest. Next. So, as Joe said, my name is Ron Zabilski. I'm a solutions consultant with Tech30. First of all, Tech30 is a value-added reseller of PTC software products, including Creo. Second, we're an engineering services company that helps engineering company do engineering. We do this with the tools from PTC and other OEMs to help our customers make the most of the tools through training and engineering services. We strive to get to know you in your business. We're at our best when we can actually expand the business of our customers and build a community by connecting them with those who may benefit from networking with each other. Next. So the company uh, Tech30 was established in 2002. We currently have over 80 employees with more than 50 engineers in the organization. Our headquarters are in Mission Viejo, California, but we're distributed around the United States to uh, meet the needs of our customers. I'm located in the Boston, Massachusetts area. Tech30 also has small business status and it has four business units. Uh, first of all, we have the PTC software, which we're talking about today. We also do 3D printing and additive manufacturing. We provide engineering services to our customers and there's a group that also sells Siemens software. We can provide a wide range of engineering services, including mechanical, electrical design, static, dynamic, and kinematic analysis, Design for manufacturing, assembly and additive manufacturing. We can do uh, new PLM implementations, system integrations and migrations, as well as training for all the above. Tech 30 can provide services in er areas of engineering and design where you currently do not have the expertise or to supplement your existing in-house capabilities. Next. <clears throat> as a PTC value added reseller, these are the uh, products that we support with PTC, Creo, Windchill, MathCAD, ThingWorks, and Vuforia. Next. We also have a broad portfolio of 3D printing companies that we represent. You can have a look at these technologies on this page. I won't go into a lot of detail, but just to keep in mind, we focus on industrial use cases for 3D printing, both in plastics and metals. We help our customers make additive manufacturing become part of their finished product or to use it for tooling, fixtures, and jigs. If you have any interest in these areas, please contact me afterwards and we can have a conversation about your use cases. Next. So to build upon the three points uh, that are here uh, uh, that Aberdeen Group brought up, let's take a look at how Creo can help. First, Creo can help you accelerate your product innovation without the worry of complexity. Creo with the Unite technology helps customer, customer, companies have a competitive advantage in product innovation. Second, we can help companies have a greater reuse of the data during your design process and help you increase the number of innovations 
and have a faster time to market. Third, we're going to help you replace your design assumptions with facts by improving this through new product design and creating new smart connected products. We do this by ensuring that you, our customer from for Tech 30, never compromises on your process, period. Next. So design smarter. Creo allows you to be ready for the new world of a smart connected products. Creo is the only CAD tool with IoT and AR at its core. So you never have to compromise in designing smarter with Creo. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Cody, and he's going to show you the capabilities of uh, the Creo Behavior Modeling uh, Extension. With that, Cody, it's all yours. Thank you very much, and nice to be here with everyone. My name is Cody Wiltrout, and I'm uh, an application engineer with PTC who focuses on our CAD and PLM products. is, uh, as well as loads or other problems that you're trying to get to. And as you're trying to get to those design goals, a lot of times you start somewhere and it's not quite the right place. And you know, you're close, you're in the area, but you're not at the ideal goal. And so you try making some changes, measure, make a change, test it, get some feedback, keep changing parameters, and you keep doing this, and you can eventually slowly get closer to your goal. This is a pretty slow process and doesn't guarantee you getting exactly what you're looking for. So that's why we've worked with the behavioral modeling extension to give you a better way to do this. Um, and what the behavioral modeling capabilities are really gonna be to help you with that is number one, you're gonna start by creating goals and uh, designs and then seeing if those goals or those targets are met. And if it's not, you instrument uh, the design with analysis features, and then using those analysis features, you can gain insight into exactly what changes you need to make in order to get to that goal. So rather than just continually kind of changing some things and seeing if you're getting closer or further, you actually use these analysis features to be able to get there very quickly and easily. And you can do that for feasibility as well as for optimization. With analysis, obviously, uh, you know, you can look at things like measure analysis, curve analysis, surface analysis, and then model analysis. And going with those, you know, looking at some of the motion analysis, structural and thermal analysis, you can take that into account when you use your behavior modeling, as well as any MathCAD analysis. So you can push those kind of values down in to BMX and use those. And then on the BMX side itself, whenever you're looking at that, you can start taking a look at sensitivity analysis, what matters, what's actually going to affect the result that you're interested in and what properties get you there the quickest. And then past that even, is it feasible? Can I really get to the goal that I want to inside of these constraints that I have? And then lastly, optimization, which is not only getting to that goal, but helping to optimize around your different uh, goals or other parameters at the same time. And so to kind of give an example of that, we'll go ahead and take a look at this inside of Creo. So we're gonna start with this gas tank for today's example here uh, of what this can do. And the first thing that we're trying to do here is say that we want to get a specific tank volume that we're interested in. And to get that tank volume, the first thing I'm gonna do is set up a volume calculation based off of this. So we have this volume that we have for the tank and I wanna put that into gallons. So I'm just going to uh, set up a relationship and set that tank volume that we have being displayed on the screen equivalent to the total volume times the factor to convert that to gallons. And this is kind of a similar concept throughout here where you can set these kind of equations or relations and then based off of the kind of either uh, you know measurements that you have or the, some of the other properties like mass or if you're looking at some of the structural properties that you want to bring in and account for you can do those and starting now if we want to get to 25 gallons we're sitting at 20 and a half so we have some improvement to make we can start making changes and figuring out the best way to do that starting at the very beginning you know the most simple way to do that would maybe say i want to take this upper deck and I want to increase the height on it 
and regenerate my model and just see if that increases the volume. And obviously that is gonna increase the volume, but I'm not sure by how much. And I could kind of keep doing this step by step until I get a little bit closer to 25 each time. Uh, but there's other ways to do that. And I might have limits on how far I can go with the size and for this height. So in my case, I could start off saying, all right, let's take a look at uh, this height here and we'll give it a minimum and maximum value. So whatever my minimum and maximum height are that I'm able to design this deck for, we can choose that and then based off of that, how is that going to affect the volume? So we'll hit compute and within a few seconds, it's going to give us some feedback to show us the volumes over the range uh, that we've given for those height options. And based off of that, I can see that even with my highest one, I'm gonna be a little bit short of where I'm trying to get to uh, here to get to the 50 gallon or the 25 gallons that I want. So going from that, I could say, well, maybe, uh, you know, I can't quite get there just off of increasing the, uh, the height on the top deck, but I've got some other options inside of here. I've got other measurements that can be changed. So I could start looking at either a feasibility or optimization study, again, trying to get to a specific volume as my design constraint. So we do have a specific volume that we want to be at. And then I just say, okay, well, I know that we can change this top deck height, but that's not really going to have enough of a range to fix the entire issue. So let's start looking at some of the other dimensions that we have here and bring all of those in. Any that we're willing to have changed, maybe the height of this bottom deck, and I can give those a range that I'm comfortable with them being in or a range within which you know they do have to be constrained. In our case, if we had a volume here that it has to, or a size that it has to fit inside of, inside of a vehicle, we can take those dimensions, use those as the minimums and maximums here, and based off of that, it will find either the optimal placement for those dimensions, or at least if it's possible to get to that volume based off of the dimensional ranges and variances that we're willing to give it. So once you have kind of all of the options that you want, we can choose you that feasibility again, if we just wanna see if it can get to that volume or we can optimize at the same time. So in our case, we might say, I want to minimize this volume or I could or minimize this mass. I could say I wanted to maximize the volume, whatever it would be. In our case, we want to minimize this uh, mass while we help, help to optimize the volume around that uh, specific value we said. We've given it what options it has for the design variables. And we say, go ahead and compute and run through that and give me what my optimal build will be. So it's gonna start converging on that and you can see it kind of go through the graph as it starts to converge on what the optimal answer will be. And it's probably gonna take, you know, uh, maybe 30-ish seconds here to run through this. So not very long to get down to that answer. And once it does get to that answer, it will change my values for me to fit that new design goal that we have. And of course, if I wanted to, I can always run it more than once as well if I wanna try to get that convergence even closer. So it's a little bit difficult to see right now, but it has changed uh, some of those. So we can choose whether or not we want it to confirm to use those new values. And from that, we can see we've gotten just past 25 gallons for our volume. And so as I kind of mentioned again, if we want to converge a little bit closer, we could run it again. Uh, but looking at some of the dimensions based off of the changes that we've made there, we can see that now we've got a new width, a new height uh, for the top and the bottom decks there and uh, we could change some of the dimensions on that back slant as well. But this is the idea with uh, the behavioral modeling is to be able to give it your goals that you have and tell it what parameters you have and what ranges they can be within, and then let it figure out the best way to design around those and what the best options are for those dimensions or for those changes. And what this is really gonna be doing for you is that number one, it helps you to pretty quickly and easily evaluate the geometry and the variables to determine whether or not you can even reach your design goals and your objectives with inside of those parameters. And then iterate on that geometry to get to that optimal design and give you those new dimensions to fit that. Uh, and then going from there, it allows you to easily understand what's going on and how you're impacting and how your design changes, I should say, impact around your goals and what kind of features can easily be changed without having a large impact as well as which ones will have serious impacts for you. And then from that, you can create products that are gonna be optimized to achieve 
both high quality and performance rating around that. Uh, so that's kind of behavioral modeling inside of Creo and what it's all about. Um, I don't know if there's any questions that came in uh, during any of that. All right, yeah, just as a reminder, everyone, um, if you have a question, go ahead and leave it in the question box and we will answer uh, the questions to the best of our ability. And uh, so, Cody, it looks like we do have one question from Alex McNabb, and his question is, um, does this work with Simulate and MathCAD? Yeah, it does. So if you have uh, any simulations that you've run in Simulate, you can push values from that and in, down into BMX so that you can use those around your optimizations. And same type of idea for MathCAD. If you've set up some calculations inside of MathCAD and you're getting values out of that that you want to push down into uh, BMX for it to optimize around, you're more than welcome to do that and it can integrate into Creo to push those through for you. All right, thank you. I'm going to leave the questions open for a couple more minutes, but while we wait uh, for any questions that may come in, I just want to remind everyone to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You know, we're going to have this uh, webinar posted later on uh, today. And there's also uh, great Creo tutorials, uh, MathCAD webinars, windshield webinars, a whole lot of great content. You just go to YouTube and type in um, tech, T-E-C-H dash 30, the number 30, and uh, you'll see our channel come up. Um, and checking the question box, it looks like there's uh, no more questions. So other than that, uh, feel free to follow us on LinkedIn, uh, once again, tech dash 30, um, and Twitter, which is Tech 30 as well. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, Cody, for being a presenter, and everyone have a great day. Absolutely.